nothing quite like it. So someone requested that I make a tutorial showing how to calculate harmed predicted preference ratings for in-ear and over-ear headphones, and I thought I might as well do it because I think it will be pretty helpful for some people. So you have to go to Listening's website here. I'll link this page in the description. You have various um, columns here or sections. You have to go to Get Sequence and then Download Sequence Zip File. There's registration required, so you fill out your information or whatever. After you have done that, the page will reload and then you just go back down to Download Sequence. After that, simply unzip the file and go into the folder Harmon Predictive Model for Headphones Version 2. The way both of these work is the same, so I'll only be using the IE template in this demonstration. So open it with Excel. Okay, here we go. We have the target in gray, and then the blue line is determined by these values here. For example, if I change this, it will get a change at 16,000 hertz. And so we have measurements, for, we have um, data points from 20,000 hertz to 20 hertz. And the only the thing to keep in mind is that these are in a specific format. So I'll show you how to do that. And Given any measurement on the internet for a 7-Eleven coupler, you can use it to calculate the Harman Predictive Preference Model. For example, let's say you want to know how the Moondrop Variation scores using Harman's Predictive Preference Model using Aftersound's measurement. All you have to do is click on this line where my cursor is and then screenshot the image. So I've opened the image here. I'm just going to drag my cursor over the Moondrop Variation's average text and cut that out. I'll show you why soon. So now go to this website, I'll also link it in the description, automaris.io slash digitizer, and then click launch now. Simply drag the image of the Moondrop variations we had onto this page. Okay, now we just have to align the axes. So this would be 20 hertz. Um, you can see a more zoomed in view in the top right of what I'm doing here. Just want to get it pretty close to what is correct for the values. Um, okay, and then we go to 75 dB. Oh my god, okay, I have to redo this because I messed up on that last one. So 20 hertz, 20,000 hertz, 30 dB. Seventy five DB. Okay, now just click complete and then X axis is twenty hertz to twenty thousand hertz. It's important to select log scale because that's how the data is represented. For the DB values, it's linear scale, so you don't have to do that. So thirty to seventy five DB. Um, assume axes are perfectly aligned, that's fine. And then for the color, you just click on this box here and then color picker and you can hover your cursor over the variations text and then press run. See some of these values are also being registered. That's because the distance is too close. You can just lower that. Hopefully it gets rid of it now. And there we go. We only have values for moon drop variations. So now it's just view data and then download CSV. If you haven't downloaded RimEQ Wizard, version I'm using is 5.2.14. Simply drag the measurement into the application. Okay, now we have the measurement of the moon drop variations. So now you want to go to File, Export Measurement as Text, and make sure the custom resolution is set to 12 ppo or points per octave. After you press OK, just name the measurement and it'll be saved somewhere. So I just named it Variations After Sound because why not? And now we have to load this measurement into the tool here. And how do we do that? So First, you just want to select all of the SPL values. On Mac, you just need to press Option, then drag your cursor over the numbers. You can do the same thing on Windows, too, if you're using Notepad. Plus, plus. Um, OK, so since it's overlapping zero there, I'll just stop here for now. Um, we'll put the values, let's say, in E column, and then um, go back down here, all the way to the bottom. OK. Now, since the values here start at 20,000 hertz and these values start at around 21 hertz, we want to reverse the order. So just simply press or enter one and two on a column next to it and then drag it to the bottom here. Okay, now go to data, sort um, by column D, largest to smallest. Okay, 
And the 57.66 is for 18,000 hertz. So that's where we'd want to start here. And keep in mind that the model does not include values up to 18,000 hertz, so it doesn't really matter, but you can just extend the values here. And also for these values on the bottom, you just need to bring them down. And there you go. You have a predicted preference rating, 89.83. I'd say that's really high for an IEM. I mean, this is like basically as good as it gets for Harman compliance. Also, you don't have too much energy at this 5 to 8 kilohertz region like the Harman target does. So yeah, variation's best IEM in the world on average. Um, and we also have better treble extension than Harman's rolled off in your target. So yeah. The same thing applies for over your headphones, but one thing I would keep in mind is that the pinna or ear Harman used for creating the target is different what you on what you'd find on a standard Gross 45CA or 43AG system. So the measurements might not be necessarily 100% compliant, but places like Audio EQ and Oratory um, calculate the predicted preference models anyways. But yeah, I mean, it's whatever. So the same thing that applied for this, you can do it with um, your own measurements too. And for OE headphones, let me know if this video was helpful. I hope it is or was, and um, yeah, that's it for me. Time for some shout outs now. I'd like to give a shout out to Mob Bill, Chris Threyu, The RFL Reaper, Ninja Coma 3, Woody Acre, Dima Springus, Cinevery, Tripped, and Linux Journal. Thank you guys a lot for supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. So be sure to join the Applehouse on Discord server, linked in the description. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.